Hi, my name is Alan from HawkDive and today we're going to be diving into the world of video creation and content creation and streaming and broadcasting through the platform called OBS. So for this video, we're going to be talking about everything that you got to know about OBS and of course I'm going to help you get started with it and get your first step on the streaming or recording or broadcasting world. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see here, we're on the obsproject.com slash download. And from here, you can actually download OBS. If I can just full screen on my window right here, you have three selections. You have Windows, you have Mac OS, you have Linux. Now, it's the same installation method for almost the same thing with Windows and Mac OS. For Windows, you just click Download Installer, install the downloaded .exe file, and you just proceed. Next, 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 next. I agree with the terms and condition. Install it. Boom, you're done. Same thing with the Mac OS download. You can just click Download Installer. Boom install it, done. Now for the Linux one, we're not gonna be touching it for this specific video because it's a little different, but if you do have a Linux or Ubuntu or any of the Linux OS that supports FlatHub, you can just download it from there. Or if your Linux OS, such as Pop OS, have Steam, you can install OBS from Steam directly. So we're not gonna be touching Linux for this video, we're gonna be touching Windows. Click the download installer. Again, you get the exe file. You install, you're done, and you get this. Now, this is named OBS for tutorial because I'll be using OBS also to record this video, but also to show you what OBS looks like. So, this would be the OBS that I would be using. I just have it on my desktop and I can just double click it to open it. So, for this one, you gotta know everything about OBS. So, we're gonna start off literally from scratch. As you can see, I have OBS opened, and this is the first thing that will pop up. The OBS Studio 29 release updates, or it depends whenever you're watching this video, it might be a little different. You're also going to be popping up with the main window right here called the Auto Configuration Wizard. You can use this. Actually, let's use it so you can see how to get started with OBS. So the first thing that we would do is, of course, optimize for streaming. Recording is secondary. Doesn't matter. Just press next. Actually, the thing is you would need to log in with an account if you would like to optimize for streaming. So I'm just going to skip that entirely. We're going to do optimize just for recording and I will not be streaming just for now, but we can still use OBS for streaming later on. You can see we just open OBS. We have this, we press next. Base canvas and resolution. What is it about? Well, base canvas resolution is your resolution, your computer screen. You can find it by right clicking on your desktop click in display settings and you're going to be popping up with the settings right here and as you can see if you scroll down a little bit it will show your display resolution mine is 1920 by 1080 that's the maximum the monitor can go so I'll be using it OBS will actually detect that you know as it is so you don't have to worry about that much FPS this is how smooth your recording or stream would be now 60 would be a little bit more taxing to your system but most modern systems would handle it very well we're just going to select 60, press next. Now, depending on the specs of your machine, this may have a different text or outcome. Again, depending on your machine. My current machine is an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor with an NVIDIA RTX 2060, which allows me to get a good setting. Now, we'll, we'll just apply this, but no worries about that. We're going to touch about the other settings in a bit. So let's just close the notification window. Now let's head over to settings. Press settings right here. And the main settings window would pop up. For the general, you can just change your theme. Usually I use dark, but for this video, I'll leave it on default. You can change the update channel. But let's not touch on the things that you would not need to actually get started. Because some of them are really in-depth. And I don't want you getting mixed up on your first day with OBS. So as you can see, source alignment settings. Just let it be, but make sure you have this one checked. Snap sources to horizontal and vertical center. Now that would allow you to actually center things on the canvas later on really easily because it will snap on the centers of both horizontal and vertical. You can scroll down a little bit more. You can change the settings in system tray. These are very self-explanatory, so we're not going to cover that. You can read those if you would like, but this lower part, we don't have to change anything about that. Just press apply. We're going to be head over the streaming section at the last part, but we're going to go to the output 
first. And we're going to change settings here. As you can see right now, the output mode is set to simple. But we can change that to advanced. Don't get scared. Like, just don't get scared. Advanced doesn't mean it's actually advanced. It's just you have more control of the things that you want to do. As you can see for the encoder, I currently have mine on X264. X264 is available to every system that uses an Intel or Ryzen CPU. But we're not going to use that. Why? Because we do have a graphics now, my graphics card is an NVIDIA graphics card, which allows me to select the NVIDIA NVENC H264. That's what I'm going to do, and that's what you should do too if you do have an NVIDIA graphics card. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, make sure to check out the description below because I will be showing you, or at least giving you a link to a file or to a PNG that shows you the best settings for your other graphics card. Now, if you go and move on to the encoder settings. Most of the settings though would be the same with every graphics card. It's It may be named a little different, but it should stay the same. Rate control, I would set the CBR. Bit rate should be 6,000. Now, why 6,000, Alan? Well, 6,000 is kind of the default for streaming, especially if you know the platform called Twitch. That's where most gamers are at. So we're gonna set it to 6,000. We can change that later on. YouTube allows for a maximum of 40,000. But nobody's going to do that. That's too much on the internet. Bitrate basically means how much data do you want to give off or save from your recording. Higher the bitrate is, the higher the quality, but the more taxing to your internet and system. Now for the keyframe interval, usually people set this to 2. And that's kind of like the default value wherein it doesn't take too much every frame and it also doesn't take too slow for every frame. Just set it to two. Trust me, believe me, I've been using this software for quite some time now, but that's the default value, especially if you do both tutorials like what I'm doing right now or gaming. Now moving to the preset, we can just leave it to default. You don't have to change anything about that. Tuning, we can leave that to default as well. Multi-pass mode, we can leave that to default. Change it to single pass or two passes full resolution. Single pass is good enough for everybody most computers can handle single pass now if you do have a medium pc a better one or a higher one we can use two passes full resolution that just makes it so that obs takes two passes per frame which allows for better definition on the quality now profile we can leave that to default again if you're using the new nvidia graphics cards like i am you would have these two settings right here all you have to do is disable those because that is very taxing to the system and it would not really give off much better quality than what you're already get, about to get on these settings. So let's just apply that and move on. Recording tab. As you can see, this is on standard. No need to change. Recording path. This is where you're going to be saving at. And you can generate file name without spaces, whatever. Just check the box. Recording format. There's a lot of them. Make sure this is on MKV. The difference between MP4 and MKV, we probably all know about MP4. That's kind of like the default for every video file. The thing is, if your OBS suddenly shut down, all of your data saved is lost. On MKV, you are still able to at least get some parts of it that are not corrupted yet before the shutdown happens. So we're going to set this to MKV. Audio track, we're not going to fiddle around with that. We're just going to set it to 1. Stream encoder means using the settings that we have on the streaming tab. But we can also set it to our own liking. Now I'm just going to use streaming encoder because that's pretty much the default kind of thing we have here going on. To make it as easy for the new beginners of OBS to use the platform. So we're just going to keep it on use stream encoder. We're not going to change anything about here. You can change your recording path. Just click browse and find a folder to your computer where you want to save your file. Now on audio, nothing to change here. Everything's set at 160. The higher it is, the higher definition it is. But 160 is the default for both streaming and recording. We're not going to touch on replay buffer. We're not here to talk about it. Audio. This is, there are a lot of things to do with your audio right here. But what we're going to do is on a desktop audio, we can change it to what you're using to hear on your computer, like your games, everything. 
So I'm going to change it to my main jack. I know it is my main jack because I named it name jack or main jack. That's kind of how I know. If you have like a speaker on, you select your speaker here. Like auxiliary audio, you just select which of the microphones you use. As you can see, if I currently just hit apply here, as you can see, the mic aux audio is now moving because now it is connected to my mic, which is called the rug stay interface. And that's what I'm going to select. Now you just choose yours. If you're using a Blue Yeti, if you're using a different microphone, a shotgun microphone, just select it from here. I'm going to select mine and boom, apply. You're good with that. Video tab, nothing to change here because it already has been sampled from the earlier auto configuration wizard of OBS. So nothing to change here. Hotkeys are very important. I would not go into each one of these for now, but the most common ones that I would suggest you use is the mute and mute. You can sell it to like the same key for both and it just toggles between, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll push to mute, mute your mic and whatever. Start recording, start streaming. You can put hotkeys in there. Accessibility, nothing much to change. I'm not gonna touch it. Advanced tab, I would suggest changing the process priority to above normal, but I won't for this specific video because I'm not gonna be using this yet for recording, but I would just suggest that. For the render, we don't have to change anything in this part. What I would suggest you do is automatically remux to MP4. Just so whenever you save a file, if you're if you're like me, if you do what I suggested to select the MKV, this one will automatically remux it. Why? Well, when you get an MKV file, you are you are stuck with it, kind of. You cannot put it into any editing software unless it is remuxed to MP4. Here we go with that. You can add a replay buffer file name prefix and suffix. This just shows on the file name. Nothing to worry about that automatically reconnect that's for streaming so basically what i do here just so just in case your internet sucks what you want to do is retry delay should be on zero so it automatically retries or at least the lowest possible like one or zero and then for the maximum retries i would just set it to like 9999 so even if i get disconnected for a little long while i would still be able to reconnect without restarting the whole stream for the network we don't have to change anything about that and sources and hotkey so we're just gonna apply and we can now move on. Yay. You got your things with the settings. That Ryan. But now we're going to be moving on to the whole OBS window part. Right? So let's get you familiarized real quick. So scenes are basically scenes. This is your scene. This black screen right now is your scene. And then there are sources. Sources wherein you put things on that will appear on your scene. You can have multiple scenes. Let's say your first scene is the camera, like where I'm at right now, and then my second scene can be display. All right, so that's basically what sources are. So some samples of the sources can be a video, an image, an audio source. So as you can see on the audio mixer tab on the bottom of your screen right now, you have the desktop and the mic. Aux. Now we've already set our desktop and mic aux, so you don't have to change or fiddle with that. But as you can see. Right here, when I'm talking, it shows. When I'm not talking, it was blank. <laughs> so moving on, there are a lot of different types of sources here. So if I just right click on the sources tab right here or click the plus sign, there are multiple different ones. There's a lot more now than, than when OBS came out. Basically, we got the application audio capture. It is still on beta. What this does is it captures a certain window for its audio. Audio input capture is basically this. Audio output capture is basically this. Browser is basically a browser link that you overlap on your OBS and it is shown on your scene. Color source, it's just a solid color feel of your choice. Display capture, your whole screen. As you can see, if I press the display capture, press OK, it'll show on my scene and it'll show OBS. And I'll show everything and I can choose which monitor they have to. And there are capture methods, but for now, we're just going to set it to automatic. But I'm going to cancel this one because we're not going to be using the display capture. I'm just going to delete it with the delete button on my keyboard and proceed to show you the next one. Game capture for games. Images are for source images, local file images. Image slideshows can be multiple images that is on a slideshow. 
media source, you can find a video, put it on your screen. For scenes, you can actually put nested scenes and have it on your sources and resize that or add an effect. For text, it's just a text. I can add one right now, let's say text. And then from here, we can just do text. You can resize it from that or you can resize it on the window. And this is the perfect opportunity to actually show you the hotkeys for the scenes or canvas resizing. As you can see, if I just hold any part of the corner of this specific um, text or let's say our, our source, we can hold Alt and that would make it into a crop. We can also hold Control and Shift to actually resize it on not ratio, meaning you, I can do this instead of just resizing that or instead of holding this to resize, which as you can see, it doesn't allow us to do what I just did by holding control and shift or just shift actually. Anyway, that's cool. You can also add filters to the sources of text. Press plus, you can apply LUTs. These are a little bit more advanced, but these are the effects. This is how you add effects on the certain things on OBS. So to show you more, we can add VLC video source, same thing as media source, but this time it's gonna play through the VLC kind of runtime. Video capture device, if I press okay, it will not show anything. It'll show the Elgato camera, virtual camera, but I won't be able to show you the HT Pro webcam C920 or the NVIDIA broadcast virtual camera because I'm currently using it. Anyway, you're just gonna press okay for this one just so we have something on the screen. And that's basically kind of the gist of the sources and scenes. But what I can do right now is actually show you layer. I'll be right back and I'm going to put some things in this OBS and you'll see how things kind of work. All right, as you can see, I've added a media source right here real quick. And then we can also add, let's say, a display capture of the main screen right here. We can resize that for now. Let's just make it a little smaller. We can also add a video capture device just in case. Let's use the Elgato virtual cam. Uh, just think of that as kind of our camera. And let's add a text as well because why not add a text? Let's just do clock time. Press OK. Boom. And then as you can see, that's basically it. This is not layering, by the way, but this is the layering part. So let's think of it as of kind of like Photoshop layers, basically how things should go on top of each other. As you can see right now, we have our media source, or I, let's rename this into gameplay just so nobody's confused. Our gameplay scene that is playing on the background, as you can see, is just playing in the background. And it is on the background. And what's in front of it is a display capture right here. It is in front of it. And what's above display capture is the Elgato cam. As you can see, it overlaps. And what's about what's above the Elgato cam? The Hawk Dive tech. That's kind of how the gist of layering works. As you can see, if I drag it all the way down here, it doesn't get overlapped by the display capture, but instead it is above display capture because on the sources layering, it is actually above the display capture. That's basically how the whole thing works. And usually you would set it up like this in a recording or streaming. Now, pretty easy, right? Hopefully you do understand something. And now how do you get to record or to start streaming? Let's talk about streaming first. Because if I hit this right now, I would say URL and stream here and miss. So what we can do is we can open the settings tab here, go to stream. And this is where things go a little different. There are a lot of streaming services, such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, all of these right here in front of me or in front of us are actually what's most used. But I really cannot show you specifically on how to stream or get the stream keys because that would show you my stream key. So what we can do here is we can actually go to a service, let's say Twitch, you can click connect account and just log in with your account. Same thing goes for YouTube. As you can see, connect account, press that, 
and you're good to go. You can also use stream keys, which I don't really advise at this point in time because these ones are easily kind of hackable or at least easily gettable compared to connecting your account. But that's just me. That's just what I'm used to. So I would just connect my account here and done. Now for the streaming or recording, I mean, you can just change the recording path. You're good to go. Press OK and apply. Now after you do that, you can just press this thing right here. Start streaming, start recording, and you're going to be good to go. And well, I guess that would be it for me on this video. And hopefully you did learn something. At least get you started with the OBS on the year 2023. Well, happy streaming, happy gaming, happy recording, or doing your broadcasting things. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.